Um, how are we all doing today? Just popping on, say hello. Just wonder you're there. I know you're there, Ian. <laughs> right, I've just pinned a link to the website. Just got everything we're um, I'm using today. Hello, Bev. How are you today, Bev? Are you all right? Hi, Brianna, AKA Elizabeth. <laughs> I'm all set up okay. <clears throat> Popped on a little, a little bit early so we can get ourselves settled and get a few people on. And if you can share this this live for me, that'd be fabulous. So if you can share it on your timeline, share it in any groups, any crafting groups that you're in, that would be wonderful. As long as you're allowed to share in those groups because some of them are a bit particular about what you can share but as long as they don't mind too much then it all helps boost things so if you're popping on say hello a few people on today how is everyone you having a nice day Nice and sunny where you are, or overcast. It's a bit overcast here this, today, but not too bad. It's still quite warm. Which is nice. Good afternoon, Annie. How are you? It's eight, feels like ages since I did a live. I think it's about two months ago since I last did a live. I think because we're back in the shop again now, we tend to be a bit busy with with that these days. <clears throat> but I've had lots of fun with this, with the art board. Hello, Donna. I had lots of fun with this, so um, so I thought I'd share some of the techniques, some of the things I've been doing. There are a couple of sample cards on the, um, I think I shared them, I, think I, shared, I shared them in Valley Crafters and they're on, um, on this event as well, but I forgot to bring the samples home from the shop. So, um, so it'll just be a good excuse for you to go into the shop to have a look. Hello Sarah, how are you? I assume everyone's all right because no one said they're not, so. Forever the optimist. Don't forget to share, please. Share, 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 share. Share the love. Crafty love, of course. <clears throat> right, I want to crack on because we've got our, we're going for our second jab this afternoon. Um, so we're gonna do. I'm gonna do this live first of all, and then we'll pop up to um, to Newbridge Le Leisure Centre to have our second jab. It's exciting, isn't it? Exciting. Like. Right. So this is just a sample card. This is one of the samples that I've done. I had a little play the other day just to see. This is actually using the Pixie, no it's not, it's using the Careless Whispers. Careless Whispers. Or Airless Misters, as they're officially called. <clears throat> but I like to call them Careless Whispers. Because um, I just wanted to see if it would work with that. And it does, works lovely. I don't know if you can see the, the shimmer. You might be able to see the shimmer in the Careless Whispers. And this is actually using the DL stamp.
from Creative Expressions, the designer boutique ones. And this is just to show you that you don't need, um, just because it's a DL stamp doesn't mean that it has to be a DL card. You can, all I've used is <coughs> that little bit and not stamp the bottom bit there. And you can make a nice card just with the little bottom bit as well, couldn't you actually? Um, I might do that sometime. Um, yeah, so it just shows that you don't, you don't be limited by the, just because the stamp is DL, you don't have to do a DL card. This is a, a six by six card, this one is. Nice size. Good afternoon, Judith. Thank you for joining us. So um, I'm not going to do that card today uh, because that's just showing you what it looks like with the Careless Whispers. Um, I'm going to, but I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use opaque pigment ink pads to do some blending. I'm also going to use um, two of the new Pixie Sparkles. These two are ones that we had as testers when we did a, um, a, a trade workshop couple of weeks ago with Creative Expressions um, but they will be coming out very soon those ones uh, so that's just but that's just these are um, the Pixie Sparkles so it's exactly the same technique as with all the other colours in Pixie Sparkles and then I'm also going to show you how to use it with the Careless Whispers as well just because it's nice to see different ways of using them <clears throat> and then if you've got any of these products then you can do it as well so to start, um, when when we first got these, I thought we've got oh, they're all mixed up. We ran the wrong way. Um, you've got the stencils here, which work are designed to work in your press to impress stamping tool, stamping platform, <clears throat> which a lot of you have got. Um, we're struggling to get get more into the shop at the moment because they've been out of stock for quite a while but I, I do keep my eye on on Craftstu's website every so often just to check to see if they've got any more in stock so um so we, we will get them back in again at some point hopefully very soon maybe at the same point same time that we get the collider stuff in again so they're designed to work in there you don't have to use it in there in the press to impress it just makes it easier um to use it in the press to impress um, and then there's also, so those are the stencils. So if I show you the stencils first of all. So you've got a squircle, <clears throat> a heart, nice shape heart as well that one is. Nice and round and full, like mine, full. Um, a rectangle or a long square as someone says. Um, you've got the, um, what's that called? Hexagon, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hexagon, I think it is, isn't it? Which is my favourite. That's one I, I use with the, the bumblebee stamps. Um, the oval, which is nice. And then you've also got a square. <clears throat> so you've got a really good selection. You get all of those in the pack as well. So you don't have, there's no choosing. Um, that's what you get. I'm going to use the circle today. Um, so you can use them on their own in the press to impress. They do fit nicely. They've been designed to fit, as you can see down the bottom here, they've been designed to fit perfectly in the press to impress. Um, the only thing is, um, <clears throat> the only reason that the you can buy the artboard as a separate thing. Hi mum! Is because this is a metal plate and these are magnetic rules and they stick <coughs> nice and firmly to the, ma the metal plate but they're, they're not the strongest magnets but they do hold stencils down pretty well but I have noticed I'm going to take my other magnets out. If I take this squishy mat out, because I'm not going to need that at the moment, they don't stick very well, because this has got a, a metal plate in it as well, I think, which is why these magnets stick to it. But when you put this on there, 
they don't actually stick because obviously the the metal plate and the magnets the magnets aren't the strongest and the metal plate is obviously a sandwich between the the plastic i think so they obviously stick fine with the magnets that you get supplied with your press to impress but the ones with the artboard don't stick straight to there which is why it's good to use this metal plate that comes with the artboard set because all you do is you slot that into the press to impress and then these magnets will stick nice and strongly to this these are these are quite handy because if you're um using something any of the sprays or pixie powders or anything it's good to be able to to put a longer piece of magnet right, on um, a couple of the sides just to keep the the, um, the stencil in place <coughs> excuse me but you don't have to have the artboard so the artboard and these two rulers come as a kit and then the stencils come separately so you can if you wanted you can use the stencils um, just on their own in the press to impress and then all you would do if you're inking or anything like that you just use your, your magnets just to hold it in place and that works fine and then that, that holds it securely so it's entirely up to you <clears throat> as always we never push people to buy anything um, and we like to give you options um, so if you want to have a bit of extra extra strength when holding things down and, um, and a bit of extra protection then you can pick up the artboard but if you just want the stencils you can just get the stencils so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, <clears throat> oh, there's a few more people on. Say hello if, you, if you're popping on so I know that you're there. Anyone that hasn't done yet, be nice to see who's there. Um, right, so what should I do first? Because I've got blending tools, pixie sparkles and careless whispers. I think I will do the pixie sparkles first of all because they're, they take a bit longer to dry and then I'll put it to the side um, to dry, I think. So, <clears throat> so for my blending, I'm going to be using my circle because I'm going to be using that with my stamp. But before that, I might as well show you a different shape. Um, the heart's quite a nice one. I do like the heart. The hexagon's a nice one as well. And I think I used the oval and I used it in landscape um, layout when I did it before, because obviously if you've got a landscape stamp, you can use it with the landscape, you can use it in a landscape way rather than a portrait. So it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna use a square, I think. Shall I go for the square? Messiest first, yes. Very true, Ian. Oh, hi, Jackie. Oh, you're in Scotland. Oh, lovely. What's, it, what, what's the weather like up in Scotland? Is it nice up there today? Right, so what I'm going to do is you, you can slot a piece of A4 um, card. This is three uh, Super Smooth 300 gram I'm using here. You can slot a piece of A4 card in that way, in landscape, and it will fit. And then you can just cut it down and do whatever you want. Um, these are, I've actually just pre-cut to A5. And then because these stencils are translucent it means you can actually move it around this artboard does have quite clear grid lines on it as well which is good well, which reminds me that's the other thing to mention as well if you're using any thinner card thinner card or paper um, the only thing you'll have to be careful about is on the base of the press to impress it does have grid lines and they're sort of indented grid lines so um, I Teresa, how are you? Um, so you need to be aware of that because if you're doing any blending or anything like that, the grid lines may actually come out on your piece of work. Whereas obviously 
with the, the art board, they shouldn't. Well, it won't because they're not they're not indented. I digress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in there, and because it's <coughs> because it is what's the word? Yeah, because it's translucent, I can see my card through it. So this is only a sample anyway, so I don't know why I'm flapping so much. Um, so I'll put that one up there. Yeah, and that one's going to be a bit too long, so I think I will just put my magnets. And these magnets stick really, obviously, because I've got the, the artboard under there, they really do stick strongly to the um, to that. So it really holds the the mask nice and secure in place. Oh, glad it's nice up there, Jackie. Enjoy. Right, so... Because, because I'm holding my piece of card in place as well, I don't need to spritz the back of the card. If I was doing um, using pixie powders or pixie sparkles and um, doing it straight on my craft mat, then it's always best to spritz the back first of all, put that down, that side down and then spritz the front and then it will stop it from um, bowing so much. But, um, but because it's all held in place by my um, magnets and everything, I don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to quickly give it a quick spritz with some water. And then I'm going to go in with my Pixie Sparkle. Pixie Sparkles, yeah. So this is the Blue Wish. So this is one of the new colours. And the Blue Wish is um, has got hints of lilac in there as well. Which is really nice. So... As you've seen me do before, plenty of times, just just whack it out onto your piece of card. And the sparkles are really nice because they've got chunkier bits of mica in them. Um, and um, so they do, it is easier to, to get some really strong, I was going to say flavours then, colours from using these. The reason I'm using our Super Smooth is because, um, not with this one, but um, in general I tend to stamp, um, once I've done my background, it's nice to, to stamp an image on there. And the Super Smooth that we do does stamp really well. If you're not planning on stamping, if you're just using it as a background, then you could use just our normal pick a mix card. Give it a good spritz to make sure that it's nice and wet. Legibly. <clears throat> and the good thing about these powders as well is that um, they're all water-based so it's not gonna even if you get any on your um, uh, rulers that's the word even if you get any on the ruler it's not gonna um, stain it or anything like that you're gonna be fine because they're nice and white clean surfaces on there well so that is how easy it, it is to use it with the pixie sparkles and the, the thing I like about these is the fact that quite often when you start to do a card, you think, oh, I, wanted, I need to do a card. And you get a piece of card like that and you think, oh, what do I do with it now? You know, it's just a big blank piece of card. And then you've got to try and work out what you're going to do and try and, you know, develop the card from, from your imagination. Whereas with this, because you've actually got something there already you've got an ap aperture a shape in a certain color or whatever it gives you a starting point and then you can grow it from there you can think oh actually i can do this or i can do that or i can stamp or i can i can add some flowers onto the top of it i can you know do all sorts of different things but at least it gives you a starting point to go from <clears throat> and it's really easy to do quick and simple cards as well 
So because it's because you're using water, you will get a little bit of a bleed. Obviously, it depends on how much water. If you if you whack loads of water over it, those colours look lovely, don't they? Then um, it might ooze a little bit more. But um, and these so these these stencils are made out of mylar, nice sturdy mylar. So there's no don't need to worry about them staining either. They everything wipes off, even um, Versafine Claire. I think I, yeah, I got Versafine Claire on it the other day. It just wipes off. <coughs> and if it doesn't quite wipe off because you've left it on a little bit longer, then that's when I use my archival ink cleaner, which everyone knows that we love. We love. There we are. So, so that's nice and clean now. I'll put that back in my little pile. And then I'll show you this. Right. So what I'll do, I will just leave that to dry because I don't need to, to worry about it drying at the moment. So I'm just going to leave that to the side to dry and then once it's dry it'll be ready to, to work with. But that looks like, that looks a bit like a, ooh, it looks a bit like a pop, poppy field, doesn't it? blue sky in a poppy field Ta -da! and then if you've got oh yes there's mm, oh yeah Phil's bringing out some nice DL stamps mm. <clears throat> um, when is it a couple of days time 20th I think which I should, probably shouldn't tell you about really because because it's 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 a secret but um, one of the stamp one of the DL stamps he's bringing out is a um, lest we forget one for, um, you know, with the soldiers and everything. So that would be lovely. Having that, the sort of the poppies at the bottom and then poppy field at the bottom and then the the um, the sky and then stamp across it with the, with that stamp. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes, Annie, exactly. Field of poppies. And because it's sort of speckly as well, it does give you that sort of texture as well, which is quite nice. <laughs> Great minds think alike, Annie. Well, so, so that is just using it with the um, Pixie Sparkles. So these are the two new colours that we're going to be having in very soon. So it's the Red Oxide and Blue Wish. Look lovely together, don't they, actually? And the, the, the Blue Wish has got a hint of um, lilac in there as well. I don't know if you can see that or not on the camera. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, it's got a nice sort of lilac tint to it, which is rather nice. Do we like so far? Clappy, clappy, clappy. Right, so I'll put that to the side. And now I shall show you um, Careless Whispers. So, with my Careless Whispers... Um, what size shall I use? I might use the heart actually, I like the heart. I'm going to use the oval for my last piece, but I'm using the heart for this one. <clears throat> so again, pop my piece of card in first of all. Just bung it in there wherever you want, and then you can move it around afterwards. So then put my stencil in there. Uh, decide where I want my piece of card to be. Make sure it's nicely centred as well, which I think that is. That looks right, doesn't it? And the thing is, you can cut like I did on on this one. You can cut always cut it down afterwards if you find it's not quite in the right place. It don't matter. So I use my. I like, I like using the, the longer ones because they do sort of hold it nice and securely in place. And then I've got more magnets to um, to fasten the, the stencil down. And because this is using the, the airless with, air, I can't even say it, airless misters, um, you do need to have the stencil quite secure, quite close to your piece of card really, just so that it avoids any bleeding. Should be 
So, <clears throat> anyone that hasn't used Ke uh, Ellis, I'm just going to call them Kelly Swisters because I keep calling them Kelly Kelly Swisters, and and I can't remember what their proper name is. You can see the lilac when you tilt to the window. Oh, good, marvelous. So these, so there are some new colours that have just come out in the, these are the pearlescent Ellis Misters. Um, so there are six new colours. So we've got Kiwi Twist, which is that one. Uh, there's Mademoiselle Pink, which is that one. Don't know if you can see these colours, probably. <coughs> um, we've got Hello Sunshine. Which is more of a sort of a yellowy colour. We got teal harmony, I love a bit of teal. Gorgeous. Uh, jazz blue, it's quite a deep, that's quite a deep blue that one is as well. I think I did that on one of my samples and it's quite a nice deep, a nice deep blue that one is. And then purple obsession, that's me, that sums me up really, purple obsession, obsessed with purple. So, um, one thing that it is, I mean, you can stand these up if you wanted to, the Ellis Misters. I find it's easier to um, lie them down if I have room because, because they've got mica and you can probably just about see where the mica has settled on the edges of the, of the bottles. Um, but because the mica, set, mica settles lengthways rather than just in a big clump at the bottom it's not so bad because um if you if you have them upright then because they've got a ball bearing in them the ball bearing tends to get um trapped in the mica a little bit <clears throat> so when you shake them sometimes you'll shake be shaking and shaking and shaking and the, and the ball bearing bearing won't actually start moving until you've given it a really good shake um so it's not the end of the world. <clears throat> it's just once the ball bearing is shaking, then it means it's going to mix the mica pro properly in the in the liquid. Uh, and then the other thing that you need to remember to do, well, two things you need to remember to do. First thing you need to remember not to do is ever unscrew the lid. So this bit here, never unscrew this. Because they're, um, what are they called? Um, because they could be sprayed at any angle, um, they do have, there's like a vacuum in there, I think. Um, so obviously if you unscrew the lid, you're going to mess it up. Um, and then if that's the case, um, you're probably not going to be able to get them to spray again properly. So you'll probably just have to use it uh, with a paintbrush. You know, you'll, you can still, they're still usable, just not as a spray. So never unscrew it, but um, always give the nozzle a quick spray either a quick spritz with water if you haven't got, if you're not close to a, a tap, or just give it a quick run under the tap once you've finished spraying, just so that it keeps the nozzle clean. Uh, because one of the problems that we have found with quite a few customers is they've tried to pump it and it's just not, there's, it's resisting the pump and it's because the nozzle is clogged. So of course then they go and un undo it and that's when the problems occur. So always give it a quick rinse or a spritz just to clean any um, excess liquid from a mica from the nozzle. You can pull this little nozzle off. Oops, looks like I'm going to be using green today. Um, you can pull the nozzle off and then clean, give that a run under the tap or a spritz, whatever, uh, because because that can obviously get a bit clogged in there as well. So that's the best thing to do is to give it a good, give it a good, good clean, just a little bit of housekeeping. And then they should work fine. So it looks like I'm going to be using Kiwi Twist today. Uh, I'm going to use Kiwi Twist and I'm going to use Purple Obsession. Because I love purple. So those are the new colours. There are six original colours, which we've got. We try and keep them all in, in stock if we can. Um, and there, I think there's going to be another six coming out sometime soon as well. 
So yeah, so like I say, the first thing you need to do is give it a good shake to get the, the ball bearing doing its magic and working all the mica into the liquid. So good shake. And you can hear it rattling anyway. That is. It is the ball bearing rattling, not my ankles or anything. Right. And then all you do is just, um, it does actually give you instructions as well. So if you spray really hard, so if you go to a really firm spray, then you get a fine mist. If you spray more gently, then you get a um, uh, less fine mist, a more sort of, I don't know what the word is. Ooh. A more sort of, I don't know, you know the word. So yeah, so once I've sprayed, give it a quick spritz and a wipe. <coughs> And then what I'll probably do later on is run it under the nozzle, under the tap, just to make sure that it is all, all clean. So there we are, so that's the Kiwi Twist. And then I've also got Purple Obsession. Droplets, yes, that's the one. Not so much accuracy with with the um, the sprays. Uh, you can't sort of go in particular small little areas. But um, but for this technique, it doesn't really matter. Ooh, see, feels all over the place. Ooh, see that was a bit blobby, wasn't it? a little bit too blobby there but then it'll blend in it'll blend in that's not too bad actually Ooh, look at the color on that oh, lovely more purple see if i give it a really firm spritz then it goes finer and goes everywhere as well so then give it a quick wipe Just a little bit of housekeeping like with your glitter kiss and gilding polishes you know with all of these all of these things it's good to um, keep them all nice and tip-top condition well so that is using the careless whispers the one thing I, I always make sure I have to do as well is give the edge of this a clean as well because it because the, the spray tends to go everywhere. Uh, always make sure that you give your your plate, your press to impress a good clean afterwards as well. Otherwise you might end up contaminating your, another project which is not, not good. So I'm just going to take my, already started drying, take my little rulers off, give those a quick wipe. Yeah, so as I said, all comes off nice and clean. No worries, no worries. Like that and then I've got my other little magnets which are a bit more a bit stronger now because they're sticking to my board I always try try and keep my magnets nice and separate from each other as well because there's nothing worse than getting that magnet pinch when two of them stick together oh. Mm 
<laughs> By the time I finish doing this, most of it will be dry. Leave a couple of little little damp bits, but that's fine. I'll just leave it to the side. <clears throat> and of course, if you're um, if you're a bit more frugal, then all the um, the stuff that's left on there you can wipe off and use on another project. Make a nice background sheet. But I'm just going to wipe it off into my reusable cloth. Uh, social distancing magnets. <laughs> Even the magnets are socially distancing. There we are. Now I take my card off first of all, and then give this a quick wipe as well. mark a little bit, especially with pigment inks. Anyone got any questions? Everyone happy? Anyone want anything explained? I'm starting to get inky fingers now, so hopefully I don't end up doing a Leone and sticking my finger on my piece of artwork like she always does. Right, so there we are, so that's that cleaned up. <clears throat> there we are, and that's nearly, nearly dry. There's a few little dribbly bits left on there, so I'll just leave that to the side, just for the moment, just to dry a bit more. But as you can see, it all sort of because I stuck the, um, the stencil securely down, it doesn't tend to um, ooze out too much. Uh, and this one was the one that I actually did with the, I think I used Kiwi Twist and Hello Sunshine on this one with the um, Airless Misters. So yeah, I got quite a nice strong, strong finish there. Not quite so much here, but hey, who would notice? There we are, so that's just using the airless misters, which is quite nice. Does everyone like? You're all very quiet today. Give me some feedback, guys. Right. Are you all still awake or have you fallen asleep? Oh, we've got some thumbs up and some hearts. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> right, so now this one, I'm going to use the circle and I'm going to use some um, of the pigment inks, opaque pigment inks, because anyone that knows me knows I love pigment inks. So um, I'm going to actually use it with this stamp as well. I'm going to sort of finish, not finish a card, but I'm going to do a bit of a topper. So this is from the Creative Expressions Designer Boutique Collection. This is one of the um, previous releases, but we do still have these in stock. Um, so this one is called Stargazing, which is rather nice. Be good for Father's Day, wouldn't it? Anyone that's got a father that does, enjoys camping or stargazing or anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna use that. We've got all sorts of different ones. We've got, we had some newer ones in recently as well, which are really nice. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the, the sun, the circle, as like a, um, a sunrise sort of thing. A sunrise or sunset, you know, could be either. So I'm going to put position, because I'm using a DL landscape stamp, I obviously need to put my piece of card in landscape. And I'm going to put it nearer the bottom, put the circle nearer the bottom of my piece of card, I think, because then I'm going to, when I stamp it, I'm going to decide how much of the 
with the sum I want. Um, and then I'm going to stamp it wherever. And then I'll just cut the bottom bit off. Yeah, so that should work. He says, hopefully. So pop that in there. Stick me magnets across there. So I'm going to be using pigment inks this time. So I want to keep my magnets a little bit away from my actual aperture. And then I'm going to be using, these are the Spectrum Noir Harmony inks, which is the ones that we stock. Um, you could use Distress Oxides, or if there's any other pigment inks, you don't, have, don't even have to use pigment inks. You could use dye-based inks if you want if you wanted. So I've got lemon tonic, honey pot and orange. And then I've also got some blending brushes. Um, so these are those fab blending brushes. You could use um, blending tools or you could use smoothies. Um, anything, any sort of brushes that you've got in your collection you could use. These are the ones that we tend to stock. So I think I'm gonna go do I go dark to light or light to dark? What do you think? What are your suggestions, people? Should I start dark at the bottom and then go light? Or shall I go dark at the top and come, come down? So dark to light or light to dark? Don't all shout at once. And if no one can make up their mind, then I'll just have to make up my own mind. <clears throat> Which I never like doing. Dark bottom. Hey, hey, Bev. Bev wants a dark bottom. Thank you. That's what I should go for then. I'm going to go for a dark bottom. Oh yeah, dark to light. Everyone's saying dark to light. There we go. Dark to light it is. So I got, which one is my, that's the darkest one. So I'm going to go, so because I'm going to be, where's my stamp gone? Yeah, so my, let me get my pencil. So the top of my moon is going to be up there. So the bottom of it is only going to be about down there somewhere. So I only really need to go <coughs> dark from there up. So this is my red. And of course you can use your um, press to impress lid as a blending mat as well. Just so you don't get too much ink on the page at a time. So then all I'm going to do is just nice and gently apply some colour. Very gently, because I don't want to have lines or anything on there. So I need to make sure that I leave enough room for my other two colours as well. So I'll just do that. Backwards and forwards, there's a nice soft softness to it. And as you can see, you, are, you don't need much at all. Hardly anything with these brushes. So I've just got a little bit of scrap paper on the side. I'm just giving it a quick wipe just to get some of the excess off. And then I've got my honey pot. It's the second colour. Make sure there's not too much colour on there. No. This one's a slightly bigger brush, it's just because that's the brush that was there. And then again, just gently coming in and working my way across. And with these brushes as well, because they've got such fine 
little um, bristles, you can get right to the very edge of the stencil really easily as well. And the secret is always to just build up slowly, so less is more. So rather than whacking a load on first of all and then finding it's too much, you just build up a, a subtler layer. Oh, hi Sandra, thank you for joining us. Oh, no problem Sarah, thank you for joining us anyway. You'll be able to rewatch on Facebook later on or we'll upload it to our YouTube channel as well. So then you can rewatch it there. Do, 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 do. There are. So this is honey pot, but it looks quite yellowy anyway, doesn't it? But it's more of sort of a well more of a honey colour really, I suppose. And I'm just going into the previous colour as well, just to sort of blend it out a little bit. Just to soften it. Like so. So hardly any in that as well. That's the thing with these brushes, you don't need to use very much at all, very much ink at all. They last for ages they are. Uh, get the excess off of there. And then my last brush is my yellow one. So this is lemon tonic. I'm going to go in with now. And then this is going to be right at the very top of my oval. The reason I put my finger on there is just to give it a bit of extra pressure. Obviously, if you wanted a lighter pressure, you could just do that and then the brush will bend and it will give you a lighter pressure. If you find that you are too heavy handed, then you can do it that way. And then you can build up the layers slowly rather than having a whack of ink on it at the beginning. And that's probably what I should have done, really, because because then you've got a bit more subtlety in it. Well, that looks alright, doesn't it? well and the good thing about this is because it's all held the stencil is all held with the um the, with the magnets especially with the art board it really holds it firm um oh i'm gonna go in um it does mean that you've got a hand free so if you've got any dexterity problems or if you just <coughs> don't like to be holding things down then um then it is a good way of of holding things in place That'll do. Stop faffing. Well, so that's that with my three brushes. Yeah, they're fab, aren't they, Annie? They are lovely brushes. You can get some really nice effects with them. So then I should just give that a quick spritz because it's a water-based ink might stain a little bit because it's pigment but um but that's fine and I can always go in with my ink cleaner later on if I wanted to clean that a bit more so then take my magnets off don't need to clean them this time because they haven't got ink all over them and there we are so I lift that off and there's my nice my nice sunset 
or sunrise? I don't really know. Don't know what you call that, really. But I just need to give my stencil a quick clean. But it's always a good idea to make sure that you keep things clean. Not like John next door. He was a right messy bugger. So has everyone shared my life on their timelines and in any crafting groups that they're in? That would be fabulous if you haven't done that, if you can do that for me. I'll be your friend forever. Well, so that's this circle one, all nice and clean. Um, yeah, I think all the ink has come off of there. I did it straight away that's the thing if you do it straight away it's there's even less chance of it staining yeah, so there's my my moon or sun sunrise sunset whatever you call it it's quite nice isn't it looks like the, the good morning Britain logo is it good morning Britain I'm showing my age now <coughs> Right, so of course now, because you've got your press to impress, it means that when it comes to stamping, you can use that to stamp with as well. So, I don't need my artboard anymore, so I'm gonna take that out, stick my magnets with that. And because it is, the, the stamp that I'm using is one of the gray rubber one, gray rubber ones, um, I don't need my, squishy mat in there. I don't need any squishy squishy one that usually goes in there. That's only for if you're using clear, any clear um, stamps that haven't got the, the extra thickness. And probably also if you're using clarity stamps because they're really thick as well. Uh, so obviously because this is a thicker stamp you need to take that mat out to make sure that it stamps properly. So now I'm going to pop this back into here a couple of magnets on. I don't know if they'll be in the way or not. And then I just need to decide where I'm going to put my sunset. So there's a big, a big, nice big space in, in the middle of here, which is just screaming out for a sunset, isn't it, or sunrise? Probably be sunset, wouldn't it, really? I would think if it was, a, um, because it's, stargazing and then the only other thing I need to do is take my backing off of my stamp carefully not to rip it going off the edge of the page but that's fine because I'm gonna die cut it and I'm not gonna need all of it anyway yeah, so it's fine and then I think I'm just gonna give it a nice strong stamped image so I'm gonna use my Versafine Claire Nocturne for this actually I'm just gonna put a piece of paper under the edge of that just to protect it because because I'm stamping off the edge just want to make sure that I don't get any any on my on the base so just going to Ink this up, slight taps. On my stamp. And of course the good thing about this using a stamp press 
means that if you do find that you've made a mistake, you've missed a bit out, or if when you actually come to stamping it, it doesn't quite stamp in the right place, then as long as you don't take it out of the, the platform, you can re-stamp it. So it takes all of the worry out of that. Well, that should be right. It's quite a big stamp as well, this one, so take your time inking it up. And then I tend to just give it a nice even press all the way round. Let the ink soak into the into the card. The ends are going to be the, the bigger areas because they've got the trees and the things like that. There we are. Let's have a quick look. Uh, it's not too bad. Oh, there's a little bit press around there. Oh, it looks really good on screen, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not too bad, is it, at all? I think. Oh, I missed a little bit there. Yeah, sometimes when you stamp, you don't need to re-ink the whole thing because if you haven't quite pushed in a particular area, the ink is still actually on the stamp. So then all you need to do is just flip it back over again and, and push that little area and, and then it should stamp. Make sure there's no ink on my fingers. Because that's the only thing you have to be careful about with Versafine is um, it does stay wet a little bit longer. So, um, so it's always good to be careful. We are, so that's nicely stamped and then it gives me a nice, gives me a nice sort of sun, sunset effect. What do you think? Do you approve? So I'm just going to give my stamp a quick, quick wipe, because this is a rubber one, it tends to, the ink tends to come off really easily. And I do like to make sure my stamp is all ink free and ready for the next time. Thank you, Donna. Yes, they are lovely, aren't they? And you've got the uh, um, your stencils as well, so it's just you can make some really nice cards really easily as well. And there's all sorts of different techniques that you can use as well. So um, oh, I forgot to put my backing on there. What do we think? Does anyone want to comment and say how wonderful they are? Lovely effects. Or are you all just mesmerised? Well, so that's that's that. So then obviously that's not quite right at the bottom, having that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to die cut. Um, I've already die cut a, surprise, surprise, a black, black um, mat. <laughs> yes, you can bring them in on, on a Wednesday, Donna. Uh, so these dies, um, these are from uh, Sentimentally Yours, 
These are the Slender Collection dies. We've only just had these in. I think he bought them out about a week ago or something, um, maybe a bit more. Uh, so we've just had them in. There's four different dies in the collection. They're all DL sized dies. Um, and there are four different designs to choose from. So there's the, they're all, a lot of them, well, I think most of them are double, yeah, they're all double debossed. So they've all got the double debossed effect. So if you can see on this, you've actually got two debossed lines going around the edge, which is really nice. It's just simple, not too in your face, just quite classy. I don't know if you can see that or not. On there, I don't know, you might not be able to. But you can see it on the dies anyway. You can see the, the double deboss bit. So you've got the two deboss bits and then you've got the actual cutting section there. Uh, so yeah, so they've got the, the rounded corner, double debossed. There's the straight corners. There's um, an elegant eyelets. And then there's also an inverted corner one, I think, is the other one that it's not actually on there. But I think there's a, there's a, an inverted corner one as well. So I've only got the double debossed rounded corners because I've also got the squares and the rectangles in those as well. So um, they're my favorite. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to die cut this so that it just fits nicely in there. So it'll cut, cut away all of the extra bits and just leave me with just the nice little bit that I want. So just grab my cutting plates. And if you've got a um, an A4 machine, it is always best to use an A4 die cutting machine with any play, any dies that have got straight edges like this because it just gives it a, you don't have to worry too much about the, the speed bump effect. So now the actual edge is right on the edge there. So it doesn't matter if I don't get it right on the edge because I can actually, I could just use some ink Just to blend it in, if I want to. Ooh, people have commented. Ooh, I missed a few. What have we got? Oh, goes to Dean. Bottom bit looks a little like a reflection. Yes, it does actually, doesn't it? Yeah, they're all standing in the water. <laughs> hmm, maybe not. But yes, I know what you mean. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe one of the, the fishing ones. You could do that sort of effect. That'd be quite nice. Yes, Annie, I love the, the rounded corners. It, all, it is always a really nice, a really nice effect, I think. Right, so, chuck this through my machine. Doopy doopy doo. Uh, old faithful, the grand calibre. Nicely cut. I'll just put my die away. Anyone got any questions? Very well behaved today. No one's got anything anything difficult to to ask me. All right, so these come with a magnetic sheet as well, so um, it makes it a lot easier. You can just pop them straight on the back on the magnetic sheet and pop them straight back into the packaging. So, uh, so then the only other thing I might do is I just need to grab a smoothie because I 
it's going to bug me that is a little bit. A little bit of land doesn't quite end at the end. So I'm just going to do a tiny little bit of black just at the end. Just to balance it out. Could go around the whole, no, I'm not going to go around the whole thing. It's too heavy. So that fits perfectly in, in that sort of, that length there, doesn't it? And then I'm just gonna map that onto a piece of black. Obviously you can, could do it on a piece of orange or orange and then black or, you know, whatever you fancy. my all-purpose glue for this. And then pop that onto my black mat. Ooh, and there's one more thing I might do. I might stick some stars in the sky as well. Oh, you can see the top of my head lovely there, can't you? <laughs> yeah, there's no copyright on the on the bird song music either. Yeah, we always get lots of birds singing in our back garden. So I'm just going to use do a couple of little blobs, I think, of sparkly stuff. So this is. Cosmic Shimmer 3D Sparkle Accent. This is the coloured PVA glue, but obviously you could use um, stickles or glitter glues or quickie glue pen and blob and glitter or glitter kiss. All sorts of different things you could use. But I'm just gonna do some extra little blobs because I do love doing blobs. They're just nice and random. Them on my on my fairy card before, so and the secret with the, with doing successful blobs that don't turn into tadpoles is to make sure that you lift your nozzle up completely directly up, not sideways. And that's when you tend to get blobs uh, tadpoles. Anyone that's done it will know what a tadpole is. A couple more around here. Probably going completely over the top. But I don't care. will do I think. There we are, so that's that's that one done and that's using the the um, opaque pigment inks with the circle stencil. So when those little blobs dry they'll dry like they did on, on this card that I did here and then all the glitter will show it's because it's PVA it goes on um, goes on wiped and then dries clear so that'll be that'll come out like that which would be nice so that was that one and then the other two that I did earlier 
were this one was the Careless Whispers and I used what did I use? I used Purple Obsession and Kiwi Twist on that one and then I think with this one I used Hello Sunshine and Kiwi Twist so that was that so that's you can see all of the all of the mica in there comes out lovely really nice and obviously you can do what you want with that. And then the last one, which I think is my favourite, was using the, the new Pixie Sparkles, which aren't actually out yet, but they will be soon. It was the Blue Wish and Red Oxide on that. Which, like people said, it does look a bit like a poppy field, that one. So I might have to use that, I think, with, the, um, with Phil's new stamp when that comes in. Not that I told you about that, because it's a secret. Here we are. So what does everyone think? Did you enjoy? What's the time? Five past three, there we are. So I've got plenty of time. <clears throat> Until I need to go for my vaccine. Anyone got any questions before we sign off? Or are we all, all, all happy? Um, so the, like I said, the artboard and the stencils are in stock. All the Pixie Sparkles are in stock. No, not the Pixie Sparkles, yeah. Not the new Pixie Sparkles. We do have some, some of the older um, colour Pixie Sparkles. The Careless Misters are all in stock. And quite a lot of the DL stamps, the designer boutique ones, they're all in stock as well. So if anyone wants anything, click on the little link um, that I pinned to the bottom of this live. Um, and um, everything's on our website there. Anyone local, they can order for store pickup if you want to make sure that you reserve your um, your orders so no one else can snaffle them. Um, we also do delivery as well. So if anyone wants anything for anything posted out, um, we send it all out via courier. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and share um, and subscribe to Valley Craft. And um, anyone got any questions? No? All happy? Okie dokie. Well, if anyone doesn't have questions, pop it in the comments box and we can, um, we can answer them after the live. Okie dokie. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. I enjoyed this. And um, we shall see you again soon. Bye then.